Hey everyone, my name is Holly, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about a ton of books that are coming out in June. So summer is almost here and it is time for some amazing summer releases because let's face it, 2020 is a stinky year. And I honestly look forward to filming these every single month for you so that you have something to look forward to every month. Today I have filtered in books that I am personally very excited for and I think you guys will be interested in as well. Hopefully you find some books that you have never heard heard of. In fact, there is not really any adult fantasy on this list, which is really sad, but there are a ton of sci-fi, thrillers, and horror. So if you are into that, then stay tuned. So starting on June 2nd, we have a Category 5 by Davila Cardinal. As soon as I saw this one, I immediately knew that I wanted to add it to this list because the cover is so rad. This is a supernatural YA that is set against a backdrop of a post-hurricane Puerto Rico. So imagine a tiny island that is recovering from a hurricane and the already battered island is now half empty. And to make matters worse, developers have shown up to take advantage of the land when suddenly a series of murders begin to take place. Obviously, with it being supernatural, we might have demons, ghosts, witches, and maybe Godzilla. Godzilla is nonfiction, what am I saying? But it seems spooky. Also on June 2nd, we have A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. This is a modern fantasy with black mermaids, self-discovery, and friendship set against the challenge of today's racism and sexism. So we have Tavia who must hide her siren powers and then we have her friend Effie who is also fighting her own family struggles amidst this siren murder trial when suddenly Tavia accidentally releases her siren voice at the worst possible moment. This one really reminds me of Queen of the Conquered by Case and Calendar where we have uh, characters of color who must hide their powers which is also very relatable with real life problems. I think this is going to be a really important YA to read and it makes it all better that it's fantasy. We have another African inspired YA fantasy releasing on that day and that is A Song of Wraiths in Ruin. We all know how I feel about that title template these days but the story sounds really cool. It's the first book to a duology. It's inspired by West African folklore where a grieving crowned princess and a desperate refugee find themselves on a collision course to try and murder each other but then they end up falling in love. In the synopsis, it says despite their growing attraction, but let's be honest, there's definitely going to be romance there. This is from debut author Roseanne A. Brown, and it's for fans of Tomi Yemi, Renee Adie, and Saba Tahir. Burn by Patrick Ness is the final book releasing on that day. It's set in a fantasy world where humans and dragons coexist. It's supposed to be a blend of sci-fi and fantasy within this, like, multi-universe, which sounds really interesting, and with a backdrop of the Cold War. So this book has a lot going on for it and I am sure fans are screaming to get their hands on it, but to be honest, I really haven't heard many people talk about it. Moving on to June 4th, Stormblood by Jeremy Sal is coming out. This is the first book to a new sci-fi military series. It's a debut novel about these two brothers who are divided by war. It's set in a world full of weird tech and aliens. We love us a sci-fi with actual aliens. I feel like those are too far few in between. The premise is so cool. It surrounds a drug that is harvested from an, an extinct alien race and it's pumped into men and women and it makes them super soldiers. It's supposed to be very action-packed and adrenaline inducing and I'm really excited for it. We have two more books releasing on the fourth and the next one is The Obsidian Tower by Melissa Caruso. That's right, she has a brand new adult fantasy series coming to bookstores near you. Her other fantasy trilogy which is called Swords and Fire I believe is now completed and I still really need to read it. We're following Rex who lives with her grandmother and already that alone has me excited. I feel like there is not enough grandparent characters within fantasy or adult fantasy in general and grandparents just always make more things much more wholesome. That's such a random thing to say but it's so true. Even grimdark fantasy, get on that. We need more pappies and grannies. Rix has faulty magic that kills anybody that she touches but don't worry, her grandmother is safe because she is also a very powerful mage. In this place that she lives, there is a tower and no one knows what's inside this tower except for her grandmother. It must stay closed and it has been for thousands of years. Now that 
is a synopsis that makes me want to buy and read this book immediately. Lastly, on the fourth, we have The Courts of Miracles. This is a YA fantasy following a young thief who finds herself going head to head against leaders of Paris's criminal underground in the wake of the French Revolution. Very cool. I definitely think if you are into historical fantasy or just anything historical in general, then you should be interested in this one. I do feel like it's making its rounds within the YA book community, so it's already pretty hyped. On June 8th, we have No Man's Land by A.J. Fitzwater, and oh my goodness, I freaking love this cover so much. It's so minimalistic, but it also tells a lot. If I could like print this out and have this framed on my wall, I would be very happy. So this is a historical fantasy and a queer love story that is set in New Zealand. We're following our main character, T or Tia. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce that name, but she is sent to this remote island for work. And while there, she finds magic inside of herself and some way to save her brother that is in some distant land that she never thought she could reach. This one sounds very ominous and it sounds like it's going to be a very powerful fantasy and one I typically wouldn't reach for but this cover changes my mind. So we have a few books coming out on June 9th. The first one being Tolkien's World. This is a beautiful illustrative hardcover that takes you to places that J.R.R. Tolkien was inspired by to create The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and some other stories that he has written. And this in particular is written by John Garth. This is going to feature a plethora of beautiful images including some never before seen images, some contributions from other artists, as well as Tolkien's own drawings. If you're a big fan, this is going to be a great addition to add to your collection. I think it's going to be really fun to dive into the mind and imagination of one of the world's best authors. We also have Red Noise by John P. Murphy. This book just throws out the words badass sci-fi and then emphasizes it with explosions. It's following a lone asteroid miner who gets caught up in this space station turf war. Again, gangs and corrupt law and then decides to take it all on herself. It just sounds so space romp 80s comedy-esque. I love it so much and if I don't get myself a copy that will be a life decision that I will regret forever. Even the synopsis mentions the character breaking out a flamethrower simply amazing. The Ghost of Sherwood by Carrie Vaughn is next. And as you can tell, it's a reimagining of Robin Hood, but except for Robin Hood in particular, it's following his children. It's a very short book. It's one of those tour novellas, and Robin Hood isn't exactly a character that I know a whole lot of, just the generalization of him. But if this has any type of like fairy tale element to it, then I am definitely interested. Also on the ninth, we have Half-Life by Lillian Clark. This is a new YA sci-fi that I feel like it has been getting a lot of buzz lately. We're following 16 year old Lucille who suddenly receives an email from Life Squared, which is a very mysterious company with the slogan, be more, do more. Turns out this company is the very first with the knowledge and technology to clone people. And Lucille is their candidate, but her clone Lucy ends up being something totally different. This is another book that I personally wouldn't ever reach for, but there's something about it that intrigues me, especially with like another very simplistic cover. And the idea of cloning in general just sounds really interesting to me. The final book coming out on the 9th is Agnes at the End of the World by Kelly McWilliams. This one actually sounds really cool. It's supposed to be The Handmaid's Tale meets Wilder Girls, which I've actually never read either one of those. I know I'm horrible. But it's following this girl who escapes this terrifying cult and when she gets to the outside world, she realizes that there is an apocalypse happening. I love me a good apocalypse story, but it's really funny. I hate YA dystopians these days and Dystopian and apocalypse is pretty much the same thing, but when a synopsis uses the word apocalypse, like, I'm here for it for some reason. It's the same freaking thing, but I'm just much more attracted to the word apocalypse. Don't ask me why. American Demon by Kim Harrison releases on the 16th, and I wasn't sure if I was going to mention this book or not on this list because... I have never read a single book within this universe. This is a long AF urban fantasy series. In fact, this is book 14, I think. But I love this cover so, so much, and it kind of makes me want to read book one. The series in general really reminds me of uh, Patricia Briggs 
series because it's also an urban fantasy and the covers have that similar style to them. Since it is book 14, I really don't have much else to say about it, but hey, if you're a fan, it's coming out soon. Also on the 16th, actually we have quite a few books coming out on that day. We have Hella by David Gerald. This is a new sci-fi that takes place in a world where everything is huge. I'm talking like oversized. The trees are a mile high, the dinosaur herds are huge, and even the weather is extreme. Everything wants to kill you basically. It's a planet that is barely self-sufficient and then suddenly a thousand refugees show up from a ravaged earth and all sorts of problems begin to happen. This book just makes me realize how much I really need to read more sci-fi because I always find them so intriguing and so interesting, but then I never read sci-fi. I just always read fantasy, so like... I really want to read this book. I kind of need it. The Kinder Poison by Natalie May releases as well, and that is one hell of a pretty cover with one hell of a pretty name. This is a YA fantasy that is for fans of Victoria Aveyard and Holly Black. It follows a young teenage girl who is chosen to be a human sacrifice in these deadly games between these three heirs who will do anything for the crown. It's set within this desert city that mixes a lot of politics with magic and survival, and I really hope that it takes those YA tropes and spins them on their head. The Circus Rose by Betsy Cornwell is the final book that is releasing on the 16th and it is a queer YA fantasy, I believe, that is a retelling of Snow White and Red Rose. The synopsis is kind of off-putting in my opinion, but it follows teenage twins who battle evil religious extremists to save their lives and their circus family. It's apparently for fans of Lee Bardugo, Mackenzie Lee, and uh, what was the third one? Lainey Taylor. And I'll be honest, the religious extremist portion I'm not a fan of, but the circus portion I am here for. So we have quite a few books releasing on the 23rd, and that first one is We Ride the Storm by Devin Madsen. First off, I love Devin. I follow her on Twitter, and she is just such a joy. And also, this is an Orbit book so we already know it's good. This is the first book to the Reborn Empire series, and I do want to mention that this book is already out, at least the self-published version, which I actually own. I think it's in this corner, actually. But Orbit decided to pick it up and publish it themselves, which is so incredibly exciting. It's an adult fantasy following three characters who get caught up in this war that is going to change the world, essentially. I've heard fellow reviewers mention that it has a bit of Mongolian influence in it. That alone sounds really cool but I have to read you this catchphrase. As an empire dies, three warriors will rise. They will have to ride the storm or drown in its blood. Ugh, I love it. This next title is very interesting and I actually have to read it because I keep stumbling on my words. The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water by Zin Cho. That's one hell of a title but you know what? I freaking love it more than the blank of blank and blank. Give me this title all day. This is an adventure novel following a nun who joins a group of bandits. Yeah, I just said that. It has Chinese inspired characters and a setting and is supposed to explore sexuality. It is supposed to be very thoughtful. But that cover, I can't even tell you what the heck I'm looking at but it's pretty nonetheless. Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a book that I have already read. I read it a couple months ago and boy did I love it. It was a huge surprise to me. It's incredibly weird with a character that is very unlikable but it was a five-star read for me. It's set in the 1950s and our main character is tasked to go to this isolated gothic mansion because her cousin sent her a letter saying that she needs help. Well, she goes to the mansion and her cousin uh, doesn't mention anything about this letter and the people who are living with her are freaking crazy and weird. It's a mystery plot at its core and I'm trying so hard not to review it because I have already reviewed this. I'll try to find the wrap-up where I did review it and link it up here or down below in the description box, but it's coming out on the 23rd and I'm excited to have a physical copy. Hunted by the Sky releases on the 23rd as well, and it's supposed to be a gripping adventure novel that is set in a world inspired by medieval India. Wow, that sounds cool. So obviously it's an Own Voices Indian-inspired novel, and we're following a girl named Gul, I think? It's G-U-L, who is supposed to be the Star Warrior. She is blessed by the Sky Goddess, and she is destined to take down the Tyrant King and rule, but she barely has any magic. This story sounds really rich and diverse, and the cover alone is very vibrant, so I totally expect the story to be 
just the same. The Declaration of the Rights of Magician by H.G. Perry also releases on the 23rd. This is a historical fantasy that takes place in a world where magic is real, but only certain people can wield it, and apparently it's the result of genetics. So royal families try to ensure that they have the most powerful magic of everyone. This one sounds interesting, and H.G. Perry does historical fantasy very well, or just like historical anything in general. She adds a lot of realism with magic. That seems to be her style and I hope she sticks to it. Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee releases. This book has such a gorgeous cover and it also has a premise that sounds really cool. First off, it's a YA fantasy and it's following an orphan who is currently enrolled within this military school called The Company, but what she really wants to do is become the Queen's Shadow, which is basically a spy slash assassin. It does kind of have this Avatar The Last Airbender vibe to it because the magic has like fire, water, ice, earth. So a lot of cool things going for it. Sisters of Sword and Song by Rebecca Ross, also on the 23rd. This cover, holy smokes, I love it so much. Okay, so Rebecca Ross wrote the Queen's Rising series, which had an interesting cover for all the books. And this cover is so incredibly different than those books. Wow. <laughs> this is a YA fantasy standalone that takes place within a Greek world with its own unique mythology. And the story revolves around two sisters. Like all I had to hear was ancient Greece and siblings money. Like, I'm, I'm giving you my money. Okay, so I have two more books on this list. The next one is The Angel of Crows by Katherine Addison. This is the same author who wrote The Goblin Emperor, which is a very beloved book, but this is not a sequel. I don't know a whole lot about this one except for it takes place within an alternate 1880s London where killers stalk the night. So we have like werewolves and vampires and apparently Jack the Ripper. I don't freaking know what this book has, but what I've seen is that it kind of has an urban fantasy vibe to it. And I believe I saw the word steampunk thrown into the mix. I could be wrong, but yeah, this book has a lot going on for it. And finally, we have Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. That's right, we have the final book within the, I don't know what the series is called, but the first one is City of Brass. It's a very popular adult fantasy series that I have yet to read, but I own the first one and I would love to get to it very soon. I feel like it's a book I'm really going to love. A lot of my friends enjoy it, and the third one is coming out very soon, so bingeable for me which is great. Alrighty, so that was my list of books that are coming out in June. Let me know down below if any of these sound interesting to you or if any books that I missed that I should have added to my list and I should know about. Go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed because it helps me out so, so much. Go ahead and subscribe. I upload videos every single week. Follow me on Instagram at Holly Hearts Books and on Twitter at Holly Neese. And until we meet again, happy reading.